Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a special podcast today because we're talking about game soundtracks. Now, game soundtracks vary massively, and some of them can be quite shite. Some of them can be quite nice. However, with me today, I have four other people who are going to give out two to three of their best game soundtracks. And starting from the top, we have with us uh, Ponji. Say hello, Ponji. Hi, everyone. We have with us Five Geeks. Howdy. Of course you have me. I am Captain Beardy, your host for tonight. Next with us, we have uh, Drawers or Lord Drawers. Hello there. And down at the bottom, last but always least, is Ten Wines. That wasn't nice. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize. I'm a sarky bastard. So, Perfect. we each have been away. We've thought about games. We've listened to the soundtracks. We've had a bit of fun with it. And now we have come together to just, you know, talk about why we think these particular soundtracks are our favourite. And, you know, you might not agree with us, you might agree with us, but in the comments down below, uh, feel free to put down your opinions. And if you agree with us or don't agree with us, then there we go. But we're going to kick it off with Ponji. And Ponji, just okay. uh, give us your first one. All right, so my first one I'm going to say is Metal Gear Solid Five because making the music part of the collectible items was a really cool thing for me. And it really motivated me to do all the side missions and stuff. That was just a really cool aspect. So I love that it was integrated into the game. No, you're talking obviously about all the um, collectible uh, c- cassette tapes that you can pick up. Yeah. yeah. Is there anyone in particular that you had a uh, a lot of fun hunting down? Because I had I had fun hunting down some of those tapes. Uh, I think one of my favorite was Rebel Yell. But there's a bunch of moments where I'd have the cassette music playing and there'd be a sandstorm and some really epic moment or I'm taking down a tank and it would just match perfectly. So I just have a lot of really fond memories with the soundtrack of that game. It was a lot more in your face than most other game soundtracks and I I think it paid off. That's actually a good point because I remember when I played that game, hunting down the cassette tapes and then, well, I only repeated a few just to like on my soundtrack, but that was quite nice. Um, is there any, like, outside of the cassette tapes that you pick up in the game, is there anything um, that was built to enhance the world around you? You know, the stuff that just played in general. Was there any particular point within the game that you actually liked the music that was not a collectible but was actually part of the game? Yeah, there were actually quite a few. I think Kojima's pretty good at um, having really cinematic cutscenes, so a lot of those were pretty well-paced and... Um, well, I guess spoilers for a pretty old game, but when you have to kill your own soldiers, how it's playing, the theme, it's just, it, like, he was very good at using music to get to, and I, I think it hit all the right notes. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Anyone, uh, anyone, got, anyone actually ever played the most recent Metal Gear? Oh, certainly. I certainly. have not. Uh, not talking about Survivor. <laughs> the one I, saw, okay. the one I remember the most, the one I remember the most, the, the, the tape I kept playing was... <laughs> I can't remember exactly which mission, but you go into an airport in the game. There's this uh, very high high value target coming down to, uh, and you have to capture them or kill them or uh, what have you. And uh, uh, kids in America, I would always have that playing oh, while God. I'm oh. stealthing around. Uh, <laughs> it was just it, uh, it it just felt perfect to me. All all the other music was like it it seemed artistically chosen in that game, as Kojima's you know want to do, but. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that music in there just kind of, you know, nostalgia going back. I I remember that song at this point. I'm not even that old. I mean, yeah, the ending where it played uh, Man Who Sold the World. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Trust me, trust me, that got me a lot of saved songs on my Spotify at this point. Like, it's got me (laughs) pretty much set up with songs to listen to. Yeah, it was Rebel Yell for me, but all of them are great. I liked... uh... Every time you did something epic, I always tried to put on nuclear oh, yeah. and time it to that the point where it just screams thing. out nuclear. Uh, the only awesome. thing I'll but rem- apart from that, yeah. uh, Ponji, and I'm sorry to cut you off there, Tenwise, no. what did you want to say? I was just going to okay, say... Apart from that, Ponji, um, <laughs> oh my god, we're doing terrible at this. Good. Go on, Tenwise, <laughs> say it. No, I, I was just going to make a funny comment. You you have no idea what true happiness is until you're snapping a guy's neck or stabbing him and while you know Kids in oh, America god. is playing in the background. I mean, there's just <laughs> that does. Oh, trust me, like, I do know that feeling. To be honest, that sounds like the perfect Saturday night. <laughs> well, because we uh, because we don't want to run too long on each topic, Ponji, what is your second game? 
I'm going to say, um, just because of how atmospheric it is, uh, Dark Souls 3 soundtrack, I, I just really like it. I'm kind of into more dramatic instrumental music, so that just really got to me. Some of the themes are just really good. Though it's a really atmospheric game in general, so that probably added to it. I've actually never played it. Oh, really? Well, I've I never, mean, I've never really played any of the Dark Souls. How dare you? <laughs> it's not really my kind <laughs> of game. That's a rite of passage, sir. <laughs> no, a rite of passage is They're climbing a uh, ladder for ten minutes. Uh, I don't is, know. Uh, it's just, it's very. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really into like the more depressing music for whatever reason. I just like dramatic themes, uh, and uh, there's some just really epic ones. It, and part of it's because of how much it enhanced fights that were already really just beautiful. It's a very stylistic game. And I, I feel like that's probably going to be with a lot of your picks, too. It's also probably going to come from a pretty good game that you liked. But I, I don't know. Something about that soundtrack for me just really resonated. I love listening to it while I'm drawing or something. Well, it's, it's very gothic, isn't it? The, oh, it's yeah. very atmospheric yeah. as well. Especially around the boss fights mm-hmm. and things like that. It, it seemed like it was almost built around the music at some points. Yeah, it's, I think that's just the way that like the, the music chosen for the game matches up with the the oh, actual gameplay so, itself so perfect but those are your two picks those are actually pretty decent picks to say that i've Ooh. never played dark souls um i have watched you know videos of like the guy who goes down the ladder with the little triangle helmet on and bonks his head all the meme <laughs> stuff i've watched <laughs> but uh, i have got a little bit of taste of the music in the background every now and then so it's actually decent ah man Th- those have really made me actually properly think now i might have to go back and listen to a lot of the songs from <laughs> from Metal Gear now. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, not to not to rush us all on anything, but uh, Five Geeks, what's yep. your first game soundtrack? Uh, well, I ha- was always really immersed with the adrenaline-driven beats of the God of War soundtracks all the way back from the very first God of War, and this latest one really brought in the orchestral moments that that just hits you in the fields, uh, you know, with the, the dead mother and the relationship with the father and the son. Um, and I want to switch gears a little bit for that, but, and go for the, uh, super massive games where they did their sort of horror movies series, like until dawn or, uh, the man of Medan, the recent one. And they actually, they both opened with the same song, but two different versions of it. And they were really, set the tone for the rest of the cheesy horror movie that you're playing and uh but in a really emotional impactful way that wasn't cheesy like the the music wasn't cheesy uh uh it was called oh death i think something like that uh and uh, the the other version in the new dark pictures anthology kickoff was uh more of a heavy metal driven version and both of them, if you haven't heard them, I mean, I, I, I've even played it for other people who just like music and say, here, listen to this. And they're like, where'd that come from? It came from, it came from a video game. Uh, you don't you don't hear lots of like quality music a lot of times that you could actually just play and listen to that actually came and originated from a video game. But uh, that's pretty much to, to, to cut it short a little bit right here. Let's... Uh, I want to give a small homage to Undertale because of the things that they did with MIDI files. Oh. I don't know how many times <laughs> I heard Megalovania mixed with like every different song you've heard out there. By the way, the best one is yeah. with the Megalovania Daft Punk mashup. Oh, I know that. I remember that one. There's so many just amazing songs in that game. Yeah. Oh, I boy, were those good never picks. Played. Like, yeah. I have to think. I have never played Undertale. You've n- wait. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hold the phone here. I'd like. Listen, I'd also like to point out. I was... I've only played the first two Gods of War. I've seen all the cutscenes for all the other ones, <laughs> and the second game that you mentioned, never played at all either. Bruh, yeah, you never. You should. Undertale. You should play the, <laughs> yeah, the horror like, games. Have you Undertale? Like, like, I see you missing. I played it with my kids, <laughs> but it was good. It was good. <laughs> Did you? I mean, I was the there music? when. I was there when that guy on Twitch, um, who'd never played the game before, they gave him Megalovania and he played it on the piano, like, after hearing it for about five minutes. I was oh, there for that. Isn't it, like, an old yeah. guy or something? Yeah, yeah, it was, oh, like, an old beat-up-looking guy. But, um, 
wait have you heard any of her soundtrack from that from undertale other than like yeah oh yeah no i've i've seen it memed to death there's so many good songs in that game oh it's very it's very popular to use on tiktok no oh, god, god. Oh, oh, no. oh no no no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> nah, dude. we don't talk about that <laughs> i mean i i did when i was watching all the because co- like i if i if i want to watch like know what's going on in a game but i don't have the money to get the game i'll just watch all the cutscenes. it doesn't really spoil playing the game for me if i get it eventually but actually, because yeah. go on what were you gonna say Paul? i'm sorry I, I actually did that with uncharted but then i bought it and played them all anyways because i don't know i just i, I love the story for those games well, it, like, if you play the cutscenes, yeah, you can, like, spoil the movie. Uh, it's, spoil, spoil the movie, spoil the game, but it doesn't spoil the game play, which is the good thing. Uh, but, like, I, I like the fact that the most recent God of War was very Nordic and had all the, uh, all the like, you know, Viking, bo- uh, Viking gods in it because I come from England and we were invaded by the Vikings several times. So, uh, go Vikings, as it were. Not True. the team, the actual conquering people, and they certainly certainly had <laughs> cool. a different sounding soundtrack, going from like uh, the yeah, Greek, these... the epic Greek sound with the chorus and the ho oh, 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 yes in the boss battles from the other games, but then you come over to this one, you can definitely tell they took some inspiration from games like The Last of Us quite a bit, but yeah, it, I can hear that. It, it had sure these little point. drum beats and like Nordic sounding stuff. It, it just sounded really yeah. warm, you know. I'm sure there's a yeah. boss battle in the most recent God of War that actually like mixes the two thematical groups together. Like it starts off as a bit Greek as Kratos has got like the upper hand, and then as he starts getting you know beaten up by one of the Nordic gods, it you know it transforms into what, Viking that music, as it were. Maybe the first one. That may be the very first boss you face in the game, probably. Yeah, with Baldur, yep. I yep. think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It it was it was Good nice fight. to see. Like when I watched the cutscenes and stuff, it was nice to see that each it wasn't repetitive music over and over again. There was obviously there was repetitive background music, but every time a different you know deity popped up or someone you know they each had their own uh, theme, which was actually quite nice mm-hmm. because most games will just repeat. Yeah, a lot of care taken with that game. I I think it really missed out not getting the game a year. Oh, <laughs> uh, didn't it? I think it won. Uh, game of the year? I think it won the Game Awards. Uh, Jeff Keighley's uh, Game of the Year. I'm not too sure about yeah, that. Didn't, uh, it should have. Didn't Christopher Judge, the guy who's played Kratos since its inception and also played Teal'c in Stargate, um, he, didn't he do the whole meme thing of like he went up with the kid who played the kid and he, and like the kid was fumbling with the envelope and he said, you know, open it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's I funky think I remember weird. that. Um, it, oh, man... Stuff gets weird when you're on. on hey, I'm, I'm pretty it's, happy to know that Red Dead Redemption Two didn't get another award. I was happy to see God of War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, well Red made. Dead's well okay, made. but oh, it's a great game, yeah, was... great game. But yeah, you know, God of War definitely deserves. I'm it. waiting for Red Dead Two Undead Nightmare. Oh yes. <laughs> that's well, that's what gets me to buy it. those we've... games. This is zombies. Oh yeah, I remember the first DLC, but let's not get off topic, okay? Uh-oh. I do remember. And I'm not trying to say I do remember. In fact, uh, I was trying to say five gigs. You've covered your topics, but is there anything else that you want to add just onto your little bit of stuff before we breeze right past me and move on to the next person? Nope, that's that's everything. All right, well, we'll breeze past me real quick because I'm the next in the thing. Uh, I only have two games, and uh, they're quite bland, as it were. But uh, the first one is XCOM Enemy Unknown. If you've never played the game, I would highly suggest listening to the soundtrack because they revamped it uh, from the uh, the first XCOM because XCOM Enemy uh, Enemy Unknown was a DLC and it was very 80s synth pop with a bit of metal in it and all that kind of stuff. It was awesome It it, because it's a turn-based game. It's like, you know, music kicks in and out and all that kind of stuff. So they did a really good job. with the transition between, you know, just not in combat music, out of combat music, victory music, defeat music, like you would expect in most games that do specific types of music. But um, that's my first pick. And Enemy Unknown was a good one. And sadly, we didn't get the good enough music for XCOM 2. It's still good music, but it wasn't as good as that. And then I haven't played Cameo Squad, which is the new one, uh, which is a, a spin off kind of in between, as it were. However, my second pick is probably something that everybody who has played the game would agree with. 
is the entire soundtrack to the game Brutal Legends. <laughs> I haven't really got no, I don't that know if, game. Yeah. <laughs> I have not played, I'm sorry. Have you, it's a game made by Jack Black. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's got Ozzy Osbourne in it. It's got Lemmy in it. It's got Rob Halford, as well as many other metal and rock god legends. And it was just beautiful because no matter what you're doing, you could just be dicking around in the game and the music is just headbangingly awesome. It's beautiful. It's set in a wacky, weird world. You know, there's like people screaming like proper proper metal screams, okay? Not, not growly, girly <laughs> screams that you get from these modern day metal bands, which... It's not even metal. What's wrong with growly girly, dude? Come on. What are we doing here? (laughs) Growly girly. Mate, Mm. the only good thing to come out of metal recently is probably Viking metal or pirate metal. Those two things are great. Yeah, Viking metal. metal. (laughs) Baby metal. Let's not go near baby metal. But (laughs) the the, the good thing about... Baby metal. That's it, baby metal. No, that's not. (laughs) Baby metal, dude. Baby metal is something you should look up in your own time and not drag us into because it will kill us all. Um... (laughs) Oh god, baby metal. But in, in Brutal Legends, uh, because it was made by an actual, you know, metal god himself, Jack Black, um, it was tailored perfectly. So what happened in the game had a specific soundtrack to it. Like people would die in the game and they each have like melodic beautiful like it's like an angel crying. It's that beautiful. It's like, oh my god. And the the lore behind it and everything is absolutely crazy. But it had one of those kind of soundtracks that was stupid. But a lot of fun at the same time. So, awesome. Now that we've briefed past my two picks, because you know, I'm I'm hosting this, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, mm. Draws, Lord Draws with a Z. Uh, yeah. What are your What's your first pick for us? All right. So, my first pick, honestly, is going to be kind of weird. I feel like a lot of your guys's picks have been very, very interesting choices. You've chosen for like very interesting reasons, and my. First pick is going to be the freaking Cuphead entire soundtrack. Oh, yes. yes. But that's a good now, soundtrack. Yeah. It is uh, yeah. one of the best soundtracks just for one reason. It just feels so lively. Like, I remember in my spare time, I was playing some Cuphead and just enthralled so much with the music. There's just so many tracks I can think of, like, that immediately come to mind. And I'm like, I could listen to this even outside of, like, playing the game and... I think for some, like, um, I think it's, um, Floral Caca... No, not Floral Cacophony. Floral Frenzy. I listen to that a ton when I'm, like, working on videos and stuff and just drawing. It's such a nice track. Now, yeah, listen- well, so much love and care went into that game, right? Yeah. Like, you can just see it in every aspect. I'm yeah, to say that every... Also- oh, wait, sorry. Every part of it is is a hand-drawn animation. It's not... Well, the bad part like they of actually hand drew the stuff, the bad and that's just stupid. Hand drawn. The bad part Almost is yeah, the, really the awesome. music is amazing in it for every single boss fight, but you start hating it yeah. by the end because you've died so often. <laughs> that that was the oh, only yeah. part of the game I hated. Yeah, there's two tracks though that I really love in that, and that's um the acapella tracks, which are um the intro and King oh, Dice. Yes. Those are just so good. I love that that feeling it has like a filter it feels like but i guess i should get to the second one as well hopefully <laughs> so well my... i mean if anyone has anything that they want to chime in about they obviously can oh, yeah, true, I, I don't true. want to rush us all past this stuff i mean we do we do have a time frame we want to stick to but you know we've got i mean certainly the artistic i mean the artistic style of cuphead just it just clicked for everyone and i i don't think i'm the only person yeah. to say this we're all waiting on a cuphead too at this point we're oh, all dude, we all want a cuphead too yeah I mean, yeah, it's that's just... going to be great, actually, to hear about the DLC. I think that's coming this year, actually, wasn't it? It was like something. I wouldn't like... know. I've only played Cuphead a little bit. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to try I, I do like the fact that a, lo- a lot of the animation and stuff in that game and music is based off uh, Steamboat Willie. It's based exactly. on just like whole yep. rubber hose um, style cartoons in general. Mm-hmm. It's got that perfect aesthetic. It's like so lively. You'd it's this it. big band, big band feel from like the 1930s or something like that. It's just, ah, uh. like it's yeah, and the so fact that they actually got a band. Its... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so it just sets the tone for everything. It's literally well, yeah, like really commits. It's very unique. Yeah, it's a very devoted. Like you can tell, there's a lot of like passion in it for sure. 
Oh yeah, like a lot of games kind of default to like kind of passive orchestral, but Cuphead's kind of knows what it wants. It goes for a style, and I have to really respect that. Like a lot of games have, there's a very general kind of game music that you that you just kind of get with most games, and it's nice that someone's kind of stepping up and kind of leaving that behind. It feels pretty lively for like indie games in general, though. Like in comparison, just a lot of over those types of games, it just feels like most of them kind of have that chip tune soundtrack. So like having that makes it really stick out a ton. It was a breath of fresh air for sure. Yeah. Now my second um, game soundtrack. It's going to be cheating a little, but I'm going to mainly just specify it as I say it. Now, there's one game on the Nintendo Switch that is obviously one of the best games ever made, and that is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Mm -hmm. But their covers of so many songs, I have to say... Are some of the best the series Dad, I'm doing a podcast. the Smash Bros. series has had, like Can't talk thinking right about now. a couple of the immediate Big remixes point. made. You got things like My the God, Game not now. Galleon cover for this game. That is just godlike, especially when you see all the other versions that have existed. You got things like Spiral Mountain. You got all these amazing soundtracks, and including the other songs in there. I'd argue it has one of the most ambitious soundtracks in gaming history. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, before everything happened that has caused us to all stay inside, and we will not mention it because of YouTube, um, <laughs> but I used to play it with mates quite a lot, and I'm Luigi yeah. Main, and mm -hmm. I annoyed everybody, but he, uh, the, the guy whose house we went around to play to had unlocked all the songs, and it was great because it showed just how dedicated uh, i almost said disney and it was dedicated how nintendo went back and actually re-recorded quite a lot of the old retro songs and actually brought them back into a new twist like um i think my favorite ones are the Mega Man 2 that they redid they redid Mega Man 2 and oh, yeah. um, one of my favorite games which is f-zero x they did uh, redid quite a few of them including big blue yeah the smash um remixes are just the best like, there's just so many. And, like, also one other song I immediately think of when I think of Smash Brothers, which I'm going to probably be a weirdo here, but it's Flat Zone. Just because of the fact Mom, that... Mom, stop practicing right near my door! That entire song is built off of, like, noises that are, like, from the game watch, you know? Like, just, like, the bleeps and bloops. Yeah. And they built an entire, like, two soundtracks off of it. Or two music tracks. And it's just... It's so Crazy. creative. It's creative and crazy at the same time. Also, That's Japanese for you. Yeah, I guess I should also mention that technically it has Megalovania and a Cuphead song. So. It does. Yeah. So that does make it If we could just never talk better. about that again, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, but Megalovania? Da-da-da-da. <sighs> Disconnects no. from this code call. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just, just jumps out window. <laughs> Nice. No, oh, we're going to get copy strike now, guys. Yeah, no, 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 that's no, not. We, we, we don't want to get copy striked. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we only have one person left, and that would be... The oh, least. What's his name now? The, the I least. His name. Yes, the least favorite. The, the least. I'm there kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most favorite. It is Tenwise. Tenwise, you have two picks. What have you got for us? Well, sticking with the Metal Gear uh, uh, soundtrack Ooh. here, Metal Gear 1. The opening theme, especially, kicking up a lot of that energy. It's this uh, synthetic feeling uh, soundtrack, a lot of artificial instruments they used. Uh, it provides a unique sound uh, rather than just some generic orchestral music to it. Uh, like, say, not really, you know, poo-pooing on this game too much, but like Uncharted or th something like that. Or even most action movies, but they decided to take a much more maybe riskier but much more memorable take on the music here uh it immediately throws me back to the 90s in such a good way uh reminds me of the pierce brosnan films especially but uh these subtle little drum beats i think the japanese style of what they want to do with a lot of their i mean anything creatively they like to do um they add so much character to the game, especially with just the music. Uh, I feel like if you gave Metal Gear 1 and said, hey, you're making a 
uh, spy game where you infiltrate things, you know, and you have to assassinate, complete objectives, and you stealth around. They don't come out with something like this, especially specifically music-wise. And it, it simply invested me in the game. I think that's what it elevates it even more. The gameplay didn't have to be that good, but it was. And that's what kind of supplements all of it. That's actually an interesting pick. Now, when you say Metal Gear 1, do you mean the first 3D one or the uh, The very uh, first classic? 3D one, yeah, with Sniper, uh, right, Sniper okay. Wolf and things Just like that. Just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, because there was two Metal Gear games before that that were in 16-bit, I believe. Yeah, I don't yeah, know I remember playing for some the first reason one. when I was looking it up. When I was looking it up, they kept calling it Metal Gear One, so I just went with that. <laughs> yeah, so it's, on the it's the first 3D one. Yeah, but cool. <sighs> actually, God, it's been so long since I played that game, and I, I remember who was it? Um, someone redid the intro cinematics in modern technology, and they they revamped some of the music as well, which is actually really awesome. Oh, I can't when, remember who it was. When you start getting into a Hideo Kojima game, there's probably going to be fan oh, everything of that. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you've seen the if you've seen the remake of the Metal Gear um, Snake Eater stuff, f- only for the pachinko machines. Oh, exactly. Jesus yep. Christ, that was beautiful. It, I, I just don't know why the Japanese... I, I wrote a note down. It's like they want to make everything cartoonishly over the top like take a cooking (laughs) anime show and make it where he can make food so good that your clothing flies off they want to do that (laughs) but here it it kind of goes that way a little cartoonish but it it (laughs) walks a thin line between like giving character the game and making it a parody you know and it sticks with the dramatic it's able to make it dramatic enough to where you can still take it seriously and love the characters you know yeah, That's the Japanese mean. for you. Well, yeah. it, it just it just works perfectly. Uh, second, well, what, oh. I'm going to say, what do you expect when you live on an island for like 400 years without <laughs> letting anyone in? Yeah. So any, anybody, but your second pick that you okay. have for us, uh, unless anybody has anything that they want to add on to that, just a quick check. Nah. Okay, then it's kind of unanimous. Everybody just stayed nice and quiet. <laughs> My second pick. Oh, but what is your second pick? Is Sticking with the Japanese, especially, for mm-hmm. some reason I'm just in love with their culture today, Silent Hill 1. Ooh, I remember playing yeah. this game as a yeah. kid and actually feeling very depressed and scared. I don't know if any of you have heard the very first opening notes of the Silent Hill 1 theme, but it is spine-chilling. And it's it's almost it's this mandolin sound that just rises up, almost kind of like The Godfather in a way. If you've ever seen that movie uh, with yeah. its theme, but it, it distorts it so much, like they're really bending the strings on it and things like that. And as that goes through, it kind of gets into this more heroic, like you still got to go in this town, you know, kind of feel to it. You still got to go in there and you know save your girl, but yeah, yeah especially. Yeah. Now. I think that was something that we lost as technology for making games got better because we instead of being, you know, like PS1 graphics, it's not really much there. So you really had to focus on the music and setting the atmosphere. But now that we've got, you know, basic photorealistic kind of stuff, yeah. we kind of lose a bit. Of, uh, we lose the soundtrack in games quite a lot. And that is, I, yeah, I think you're correct yeah. on that because we get a lot of those indie studios. Uh, I I can't remember the name of it now. Um, where you jump around, it was much more of a platformer with spikes and everything. Uh, Celeste, I remember that one right now. They started having a much bigger emphasis on the uh, music in the game, and it, it sticks in your head much like Undertale. It sticks with that pixel, 8-bit kind of style and things like that. You actually had two decent picks right there. In fact... <laughs> Everybody had really decent picks over that entire thing. Did you have low expectations of me? (laughs) No, I I was expecting at one point someone had mentioned something and then someone else had bite their head off. Like, you know, we've all been quite civil. It's it's very impressive. I thought we were going to have a full-on war. Even with Megalovania. (laughs) (laughs) No, my my favorite soundtrack was definitely FIFA 20. FIFA 20 set the tone. (laughs) (laughs) Well... (laughs) 
so we don't go deriving down weird random tangents, I think now that we've covered all of our topics, it's, well, all of our uh, picks, it's a good place to end it because we don't want this to run too long. And about half an hour is a good thing. So I will say this. Everybody here has had decent picks and everybody agrees that we've had decent picks, but we want to know what you at home thought about our picks. Now, if there's anything that you don't agree with, please don't be that kind of person that's just like, you're wrong, this is why. Have a conversation with us, get involved, comment down below on uh, two of your favourite picks and why, and what you thought of our favourite picks. And uh, if you agree with us, let us know. If you don't, well, tough luck. But once again, still (laughs) talk with us and get engaged. But it's about time that we wrap this up. So to say goodbye, let's start from the top. Ponji, you want to say goodbye? Bye, guys. I'm Ponji Ninja, and I make videos. Five Geeks, you want to say goodbye? Sure. I'm Todd Allen Fisher, and I make videos for fivegeeks.blog, and we're also fivegeeks.blog on the internet. <laughs> there we go. Lord Droids, you want to say goodbye? All right. Bye. <laughs> Very nice. And Ten Wise, round us out. Uh, well, you can find me, if you did enjoy my segment here, you can find me at youtube.com <laughs> slash 10 I do video essays on uh, gaming topics and things like that, basically complaining about how bad publishers are in the AAA industry. But yeah, that was my time. Thank you for having me. Well, you well it's been fun having you all on, and hopefully we can all get together and do something similar again. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for sticking around with us for the entire half an hour and a bit. I've been Captain Beta. We've had the pleasure of joining us talking about game themes. And remember, though we are nerds, we are only nerds when it's very important, which is all the time. So please go ahead, like, share, and subscribe, and stick around for all the awesome stuff that we've got coming up. And go check out um, all of our awesome stuff on the Game Domain channel and all the other channels that we have. But thank you for joining us, and good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.